You're listening to the Heroes Power Hour, presented by BlizzPro.com. Your host, Balrog fan, Zexorus, and DJ Tyrant. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Heroes Power Hour. This is episode number 94 of your Heroes of the Storm podcast, brought to you by BlizzPro.com, partnered with Legion by Lenovo and Intel. Uh, I'm your host, DJ Tyrant, and with me is always, as always, the awesome crew. I'm going to talk to them. Let me introduce themselves, how their week has been. We'll start with Balrog Fan. Hey, how's it going? Uh week has been pretty good so far played some games before the show today trying to get back in the swing of things uh i tried out dahaka i (laughs) i played dahaka without a healer so that that didn't work so great um then i then i was playing hammer just to practice her a bit and i played hammer without a tank that also did not go so great and then i uh then i went back to tyrael and tyrael felt nice so i think i'm gonna start playing a little more tyrael He's uh, he's one of those sneaky good picks, I think, that can uh, do work when you need him to. Mm-hmm. He's in a pretty decent playing. spot right now. I feel like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's not overpowered. I'm not. I'm not saying pick Tyrael mm-hmm. because no. he's amazing, but he's always been one of my heroes, and it felt like he was out of the meta for a while. Mm-hmm. For uh, sure. But I don't know. I, I enjoy playing him. Uh, P Flame G, how about you? Uh, I've been playing a little bit of Zul'jin. I'm enjoying him. Um, I like his playstyle. I think he's a pretty solid ranged assassin that I'm comfortable with. So uh, I've had fun with that. We played some of the Brawl earlier t- this evening and uh, <laughs> kicked some butt. Those were really one-sided games. <laughs> yeah, those were fairly brutal. I took Pyroblast against a Medivh and we won. <laughs> yeah, there was one Arcane Orb I hit in the first game and it blew up like three people i think oh god i remember that the, <laughs> the three deaths in under a minute yeah, yeah. oh it was, that just, was... it was one triple kill instantly it was like a leaming arcane orb and a chromy w and just like they were all sitting at their gate and immediately died and just the game was over from there <laughs> like, yeah. i died about 10 minutes in it was our first death yeah and, but yeah, Zexorus, how has your week been in Heroes? Uh, what have you been up to? Uh, well, if you hear that noise outside, that's the tornado warning. Um, please, please not, don't not, die. I might have to BRB tornado at some point. Um, I've been a little under the weather, so I've been doing some home, uh, home remedies. <laughs> if I seem a little off tonight, that's because... Uh, this tornado is hit- about to come kill you. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so, um, I've been playing. I played a little bit of Heroes, uh, especially today. Uh, played some with Charlie. That that was a lot of fun. And Charlie, that your hammer game was just fine. It was the nine death Illidan that ruined the game. Is there any other yeah. kind of Illidan? That's true. There was just literal. <laughs> wait, wait, there, there wait, was wait, 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 Hey. No, it was no, it was worse. Like this guy consistently got baited out by a tracer. Like Ooh, ouch. This tracer would just dance in front of him and he would go on her and then he would just get mauled by uh Valera and somebody else. And it was just really really bad. Um other words, other in other news, I uh came very close to getting a sub 4 hour run in Fantasy Star 4 today, which was kind of weird honestly i wasn't really expecting that to happen so i'm happy with that so hopefully i just start feeling better because i've been sick for like two weeks now and i'm i'm done with it yeah i hope you start feeling better too you've been pretty miserable uh but let's just get into the news because part of the news has basically been my week in heroes um i've been playing a lot lately and last saturday was the heroes charity brawl 
um, with a bunch of the other heroes podcasters in the community. We raised over $5,000 for the Make-A-Wish Foundation, and that was a lot of fun. Thank you, everyone who came out, and thank you, Blizzard, for their huge support with a lot of uh, codes and all sorts of stuff. They uh, they also helped us get on the front page of Twitch, which is, um, if you're familiar with kind of how that works, it's actually a fairly big deal, and that's difficult to get on there. So thank you, Blizzard, for that. Um, it was a lot of fun. Um, we got to just kind of play. Thank you, Ball Route yeah. Fan, for the donation, by the yes, way, as well. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Go on. No, no, really. Thank you for, for doing that. Charlie wants something, us. and then they gave it to somebody else because he was affiliated with one of the podcasts. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I... I, I didn't know I, that until they announced it. <laughs> I made the executive decision. I was like, I don't feel good about that. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, I don't care. Okay. I but didn't yeah. donate for that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was just like, I was just having so much fun typing Scott died that like, <laughs> I didn't even really think about it. Yeah. I was just like, yeah, ooh, sure. entry time. Yeah, Scott Johnson uh, hosted the stream on uh, Frog Pants channel, which is his kind of um, company that he does all his podcasting and art stuff from. Uh, and it was just a really fun time. We got, <clears throat> we came up with some really fun um, game modes, kind of, just on our own, yeah. and uh, I, I think one of my favorites was Battle of the Boolean, which basically, <laughs> you you weren't allowed to push any lanes, and the first team to gather a hundred uh, doubloons on uh, Blackheart's Bay won the game, and it actually was really close, um, and it, it's very, very satisfying when you kill someone and like 50 coins explode out of their body. <laughs> so that so was. Did fun. y'all have to build a team comp for the Nemesis draft? Because, like, I think both of y'all ended up with a tank and a support on your team. For which one? And it was just like, the were you drafted for your opponents? Yeah, we did. It, <laughs> I, it was I like, y'all had why. like reasonable team comps instead of like five supports or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it was really weird. I don't, we, I guess we didn't have a good strategy for that. <laughs> Oh, but that was fun, and um, the other one I really liked was the heroes versus raid bosses. Um, hopefully, hopefully next year when we do that, there'll be more uh, raid bosses available because there's only six characters to choose from, I think, and yeah. one of them is two because it's Chogol. <laughs> so it was uh, Chogol, Rag, Gul'dan, Illidan, Arthas, uh, Arthas, yeah, yep. trying to remember the other ones. The trivia one was pretty cool too. I yeah. enjoyed that one. Yeah, let's not talk about that. Jimmy, <laughs> I was screaming, Tychus, Tychus. <laughs> I I didn't get to watch it. I had to work. I was sad that I missed it. It's pretty cool. I, I if it should all be on Frog Pants's uh, previous viewing. I don't know if he highlighted it or not, but anybody who didn't get a chance to check it out, I definitely recommend it. They did a lot of unique things that were really fun to watch and. Uh, they had some great chat interaction, and I assume they'll probably be doing this again next year. So, I mean, shoot, we could we could adapt some of those game modes in like after hours. Oh, That's absolutely, hundred percent. Like the the battle of the bu- bullion or whatever, we could do that pretty easy. We can mm-hmm. nemesis draft. We can the trivia one would be harder to organize. Yeah, somebody has we... to be willing to come up with a bunch of questions, and mm-hmm. but <laughs> the others are pretty. It was a lot of fun to watch, though. Um, and then it raised five thousand dollars, which is absurd. Yeah. They were shooting for like three point two, I think. Three two three. <laughs> were you really? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There was there was very deliberate that uh, that That's initial excellent. goal. <laughs> yeah, uh, we had hit like two k, I think, before we even started streaming, and it just built up over the the rest of the stream, which was it was about four or five hours, but it was it went by super fast. For, for me being a part of it and it was a lot of fun and I'm happy that everyone came out to check it out and it was a lot of fun um, any closing thoughts on that before we talk about what I did today I, I got a chance to watch three hours of it I was very happy um, all I can say is that if you didn't get a chance to see it go go watch it mm-hmm. alrighty and also today I got to hang out with Kyle Ferguson, if you're not familiar with him, he's a part of Into the Nexus, and he does a lot of uh, streams, kind of educational streams about uh, playing competitive drafting, and he's probably the the most chill person I've ever played Heroes with. He he hardly ever gets tilted, 
from what I can tell. I um, mean, he's a really great shot caller as well. Um, when talking about the charity event, whenever I was on a team with him, he would shot call. And I think that's why we won most of the time. Cause I, I don't know, just having a really uh, knowledgeable shot caller just makes me play infinitely better. I feel like. Um, yeah. Makes a huge difference yeah. in a game like huts. But yeah. I, I mean, play, he, yeah, he's an amazing player. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I got to duo queue with him. Uh, we started out in Team League, uh, but the queues were so freaking giant that we decided to go to unranked draft, and we had some good games. So it was a lot of fun. Um, learned learned a lot about just, I don't know, communicating better in the game and not getting tilted as much um, in, in drafting strategies. So uh, he'll put Team that League up on his YouTube. so saturated with duo queues. Mm -hmm. Like, if you trio queue, it's instant, but if you duo it, you're going to be in there a while. Yeah, the, the duo queue took, I think, six minutes to queue up. Mm hmm Maybe more. I don't know. It was it was a lot, though. But that was a lot of fun. Uh, that'll be up on Kyle Ferguson's YouTube, so make sure to check that out. And uh, What do you think your biggest takeaway from that was? Um, geez, just learning more to draft around the comp than necessarily exactly what i want to play okay it's doing a better job about that that's always important yeah um but the big thing i think this week was yesterday we had a balance patch get released for here's the storm and holy cannoli lots of changes coming out for many heroes uh we've i think we've all seen kind of the uh professional uh, community comment on a lot of these changes but I want to hear about your guys's really quickly. Um, Balrog fan, I know you love him. I know you love him. But Tychus, getting the Diablo treatment, maybe. What do you think? I don't think it's as bad as when they initially nerfed Diablo back way back when. Uh, I think it was last summer. Not not this prior summer, but 2016 15? summer? 15 summer, yeah. Summer of 2015. The day Diablo died. Um, but range i mean they okay so they buff everything basically that doesn't have anything to do with his range they made that's the stuff better they made neo steel coating better they reduced the cooldown and mana cost on overkill his q better the attack range on commander odin increased slightly better but the main thing they did it that really hurts is they took his base attack range down from 5.5 to 4.5 and press the advantage only increases at 1.5 now instead of 1.9 so basically he used to be able to get up to about a seven range now he can get up to six it's it's bad it's not great especially for the pros because they're used to that extra range tychus is kind of a squishy character he has escapes but nothing that you would ever really write home about and and depend on with his uh, positioning abilities. He's always going to be a hero who needs to be up in people's faces for his auto attacks. And the closer he has to get, the the, uns the more unsafe he is. So it's troublesome. Um, I, don't, I don't like the changes. I wish they wouldn't have done that to him. I don't know why they did that to him. He doesn't feel overbearing in any phase of play, whether it be casual or competitive or just like hero you know like you've never seen anybody go like oh man tychus is just too strong he's mm -hmm. i mean he was he was strong he was picked a lot in mm -hmm. in competitive and in my elo um i i disagree with the way they changed him like their their comment was he's too good at tank busting and assassin busting and we want him to be a tank buster hero which i can agree with you know it's a it's a tank rampant meta, so naturally Tychus is strong. So I don't even. But you know, if he's doing too much damage to assassins, that's fair. But instead of like, you know, working his trait and his minigun around a little bit more, so more of his damage is loaded into that minigun, they just nerf his range, which is like huge. Like if that that one range of like, I you know I can attack this safely and not be in range of a stormbolt or not be in range of whatever. He just, it got reduced, where he's now in range of pretty much anything anybody can throw at him all the time. 
Um, so, like, if they have cooldowns available, if Tychus wants to auto-attack them, he's trusting his healer has a cleanser and ancestral. Yeah. Yeah. I the thing I, I the thing I the thing I do want to note though is that they did change press to the advantage, which is pretty much, in my opinion, the go-to talent for Tychus at one, and they no increase, huh? No doubt. And so they increased the range from 1.9 to 1.5, which is both a buff and a nerf. So it's a buff because, yes, it's an attack range. But because of his basic attack range being decreased, you now want to use that at the start of a team fight so you're out of range of those storm bolts and stuff like that. Which I leaves you with which leaves you without an escape in case someone gets on you. Well, aren't you misreading it? Because the range increase is reduced. It always increased yeah. range. But still, it is, it is the the point is still valid. Where using that talent offensively to provide him the safety to fight removes like it gives him like a range advantage, but he loses his dash. Mm -hmm. So right. it's just that, like a trade off of safety, which that, is kind that's, of. That's what I'm getting at. It, it's a it's the oh, trade off. Okay. It's the trade off thing. Um, but it was so, also, I mean, the the way I generally used it would be, you know, basic attack range, scoot back when they start closing in, and still have the range, have right? Even more range, so. and that's how you would use it. But now you're you're like Carl you're said, extra punished you're, if you don't have it, right? You're you're within range before you use it of stuns and people being able to get on you quite easily so now you have to you have to question do i do i go into the danger zone and maybe eat a stun or do i use this offensively and risk not having an escape if things go south so that's true and carl brought up a good point in there too i mean like it's blizzard really prides themselves on trying to make these talent trees feel like there are three valid choices and when you nerf attack range and you slightly change the one that gives you more attack range it kind of locks you into that talent yeah because mm -hmm. you're going to try to get back to what he was mm -hmm. and without press the advantage you are severely lacking in, in not severely lacking compared to other but compared to what he used to have yeah i agree i mean i well, I think I think four point five is lower than most range assassins. His basic attack range already felt a little. I don't know if basic is six or something. It felt a little short. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, yeah it's I've, not it's not Valor range. Sorry, I haven't yeah. I haven't played him since the nerf yet, but I was starting to play him more often than I had in the past, and I was really enjoying his toolkit. And now I'm like, oh, I guess. Uh, <laughs> guess he's not too strong anymore which is unfortunate because i was enjoying his play style i mean I'll, I'll probably try him a couple times to see what he feels like now but yeah that basic attack range seems like a really scary nerf to me i think we're we're all pretty much in agreement there yeah yeah i i don't i don't really know what they were thinking with this but we'll see yeah definitely uh the really big one though that i think is even bigger than the Tychus changes, is Varian. Uh, Warbringer now uh, does not have stun. <laughs> it, it increases the charges slow, but there is no stun anymore. Eflame G, I know you, you really like Varian. How, how much does this impact him uh, going forward? So, this is definitely a nerf, because stun is just so much better than an 85% slow. It's not just, it's not like, oh, well, it's, you know, they have 50% move speed, so, you know, it's not like they can get away. But if they have a dash, they can get away. If they have, they can still use their abilities if they've got a shield or a self-heal or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's like, there's so many things. And, like, you know, there's heroes like Valera and Zul'jin who have, like, self-cleanses if they're slowed. Um, but now can, can, can do that for this. Um, so just the way people played Varian was you charge somebody and just before your charge ran out, you taunt them and somewhere in there you get like a, ideally like a Sulfurous Smash and a Jaina Blizzard or something or whatever your combo was. Mm -hmm. And he was just single target blow up that this point and click target. And to be fair, it wasn't the most difficult like engaging gameplay because you click your stun target with both of your stuns. And it's just, it's so strong. Um, 
But he wasn't OP. Like they did, they balanced him around the fact that he has two point and click stuns if you go taunt build, and he doesn't anymore. I don't know. The other four talent will be picked. Um, with the cooldown reduction again, it's at twelve seconds now. It's still long, but it's it's okay. Um, and Warbringer no longer a stun. You will see the the invulnerability at four, and it's not the worst. Shield wall. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I think this will hurt him a lot in pro play. Um, I think... Does this lock him out of being a true tank, really? Like, does it take away his multi-class capabilities a bit? I don't, I don't think so. Not, uh, no. If they nerf him again, it does. But I think he's still okay. I, I think if you, if you're... <sighs> Carl, you're going to kind of hate me for saying this, but I think if you want to go true, true tank I, with, with Taunt, I think you kind of need to go Shield Wall just because of the fact that it just outright prevents damage entirely. So Yeah, and it's, it's a shift in playstyle, <laughs> basically, if you do that. Because before it was, I'm going to lock this target down for three seconds and they're dead. And now it's going to be, I'm going to be able to long range initiate with charge, and I'm going to go in vulnerability. I'm going to tank a bunch of damage, and my team's going to follow up. And it's tanking still. Yeah. Um, but it's it's different. Yeah, you can't single target blow a, a hold a hold a target down for what three and a half three seconds. I forget what the the stun was on uh, Warbringer, but yeah. taunt is like a second and a half. Yeah, I think the Warbringer was like a but second or something. You can't so was... you can't hold them down for two and a half three seconds anymore. It's you slow them for a few seconds and then you pull them back. Into wherever you were, preventing any damage in the process. If your if your team <laughs> comp is built on blowing somebody up, you're going to taunt immediately after you hit the charge because you can't risk them dashing mm -hmm. or whatever away. So it just like, even though it's just like fifteen percent slower, it actually removes that stun duration from the chain. If you're really trying to blow that one person up. Yeah. So something that we've seen from blizzard trying to with this multi-class hero uh is we didn't really see taunt or, or anything besides taunt really at the top level of play they did also in this patch change colossus smash to have a higher damage bonus and twin blades of fury the attack damage penalty has been reduced from where it was do you think this opens up options for the bruiser and assassin style variant to come to the to be a, a, a true option, or is it still just not strong enough? I think there are definitely options in casual play. Um, you can definitely you can do work with a Twin Blades build. Uh, you're basically Illidan. You sit in a fight forever and life steal and kill a bunch of things and never die. And then Colossus Smash is just, you know, it's a blow-up build. And, you know, guess what? People can't really deal with well in uncoordinated play. It's blow-up. Um, in pro play... I don't know because he's. I don't know. I it might, but just you know, I think in pro play it's like if you're gonna draft Twin Blades variant, why don't you just draft Illidan? Um, if you're gonna draft Colossus Smash, why not? You know, like a Greymane or something. Mm -hmm. There's people that fill that role already, and I guess other than just psyching people out, and, oh, you think we're gonna taunt variant, but we're actually gonna Colossus Smash and blow you up. <laughs> you know, which has value, mm -hmm. but I think they'll they'll I think the pros will fall back on the heroes designed to do what class of smash and twin blades do. Um, you know, nobody had the point and click stun like Varian did, right? You know, there there have been so many like Miranda, etc, Taranda comps, whatever. Where like you just lock down this one target and this variation, but it was always a skill shot. It was always you had to land the murder in Q, you had to land the Arthas route, you had to land the power slide. Um and very just like, oh hey, I can do this better. Does he really do blow up better than Greymane? Does he really do life still better than Illidan? I don't know. Probably not. <laughs> so uh, probably not. Yeah. Um... The right build. Okay, hold on. No, let me jump into her real quick. With the right build on Varian, yes, I think he does actually do better life steal than Illidan. <laughs> and the only proof I have is this: I can see Twin Blades Varian with Shield Wall 
solo a boss. Pretty much all yeah. the bosses. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So that alone, Illidan can't do that. Yep. He can come close, but he can't so, just straight solo a boss on his own. Mm-hmm. So, and that's better than even, in my opinion, that's better than what even Rexar can do. Yeah. Because Rexar <laughs> needs Misha. You know, that's, but, a, that's a two on one. So I, I think Varian does win in a straight, I do more damage and life still more. But Illidan has so much mobility and so much chase, right? right? Varian, if you go that, that shield wall, <laughs> which I think you have to on a DPS build, um, you know, your charge is still in a 12 second cooldown. And, you know, Illidan has, his, has two dashes on like four second cooldowns if you're attacking people. So I don't know. We'll see. I, it, it might see play. It definitely will see play casually. Um, mm, I agree. It's always but, see play casually. Yeah, it already does, and they buffed it, so it's yeah, definitely going to see play casually. Um, Coopler asked a good question, too, and this is what I thought Varian's role would be in in uh, in the pro scene, and it didn't really yeah. turn out that way. But he does he have draft value in taking him and... It's, and Taking him as an early pick to hide team comp or to give you options for reaction. Um, he does. Yeah, he definitely does. And I think also, I mean, we talk about, like, you know, is he better than Greymane? Is he better than Illidan? Well, he's better than those heroes if they get banned. And mm-hmm. you really yeah. need someone to fill that role. So he That's he true. has, he's, he's a very versatile pick. And um, I, I am surprised that we haven't seen, we've only seen Taunt, you know, um, the strongest argument I have against that is that pros don't like to change their minds. Yeah. I mean, how many <laughs> patches does it take for them to take Gust? And how many patches have they nerfed uh, Hinterlands and they're still taking Gust? Yeah. Um, you know, and it happens on every hero and every heroic, you know? It was like a month and a half after Ninusworm got buffed that Coth and Luck started destroying people with it. And they're like, oh, this is a legitimate heroic, okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. let's go Let's go back to something you said many episodes ago. Anything that okay. controls the enemy movement is king. Yeah. yeah. That's why That's why Gust is still being taken because it just, it just doesn't... It does exactly that. And it does it offensively or defensively. It's the ultimate engagement or disengagement tool. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, Hinterlands Blast is getting looked at now, but again, that that massive disposition on the other team, coupled with the slow that it brings afterwards, is incredible. Like that leads yeah. to really incredible plays. Like there was yeah. there was this one game where we were playing against a an ETC Falstad. And we knew what they were trying to do. They were trying to gust up, a, gust us up against a wall, and ETC mosh would pit. slide in for a mosh pit. And we were avoiding it all game. And then they hit it one time in the late game, and they just simply won off that. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, and taunt is his movement controlling ability. Yeah. Yeah. Taunt him, run away, pull him into your team, blow him up. So I don't know. We've probably talked too much about Varian. <laughs> There's another hero. Just, There's they another slept hero on the that best tank in the game. I know they they uh, Dude. they weren't happy just killing him off in World of Warcraft. They had to kill him off in Heroes too. Are we talking about Malfurion? No, Malfurion's no. still alive. Malfurion's alive. Varian's dead in WoW. Oh. <laughs> uh, but uh, Charlie's nightmare is over now? Question no, mark. Maybe. No, it isn't. I don't know. We'll we'll see. Uh, Murky, <laughs> I've, I've seen this movie. Murky has received nerfs uh, kind of across the board. Um, Zex, I know you've been playing a ton of Murky. So, what do you think of these changes? Were they needed? Yeah. <laughs> short short answer. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, March definitely needed the cooldown or, uh, increase. Like March was just absolutely idiotic in its in how good it got. That 80 second cooldown was too much. Um, and you didn't even really like you didn't even use it for pushing anymore because Murky got that good at pushing with uh, bribe stacks. Like mm-hmm. it, it got you didn't need March. You just went out and grabbed your if uh, there weren't anybody. Well, if there wasn't air around, especially like on Sky Temple, you just went down. If you had four stacks, grab their camp, grab your camp. Hey, you're good to go. 
Yeah. yeah. Just to, so, just to give you an idea though, uh, this is something we talked about on uh, Kyle's show earlier today is taking a look at hot slug. You can actually filter by the last patch. So mm-hmm. this is basically games over the last 24 hours. Murky's win rate has dropped eight and a half percent. That uh, sounds good. <laughs> like wow. I don't so know he's what at fifty percent now. He's at forty seven point six. Okay, that might have been a little extreme. And but... uh, I don't. This doesn't really mean anything because it's only based off one hundred ninety one games played. But uh, Vikings win rate went up seven and a half percent. How? Because that's sample size for you. Specialist, yeah, yeah, it's sample size. Okay. It's. Enough. You can <laughs> glean a little bit from this. I mean, obviously, it's not the authoritative numbers of what's really going on, but it gives you an idea at least. Like they didn't, they didn't really mess with the build I used, which was, uh, which was uh, bribe, tougher fish. They did nerf bribe. Well, the, well, bribe. To be fair, bribe needed. Nerf, it needed. Like, it. Yeah. No, I'm not arguing with that. They did uh, slightly nerf it. <laughs> If I sent my power just flickered, so if I go bye bye, sorry. Um, if let's see, thought you didn't like that fish, talent on Chromie. T- huh? Never mind. You said you go bye bye. Oh, uh, <laughs> um, God! Don't distract me, right? Jimmy, now. you're supposed to be the host. <laughs> <laughs> and now my cat is playing with a stink bug. Let's see. So time to krill. Uh, March of the Murlocs. Uh, eggshell. Let's see, 16, I took uh, Toxic Buildup, and then Making Inky at 20. Like, they didn't really touch that build, and if you use that build, you put out a disgusting amount of damage. Like, again, soloed that jo- Johanna from full health to nothing, threw an indestructible, and didn't die once. This so... Is- this is the third so, time I've seen this Murky movie, all right? This first, they change him, and they're saying, we're going to make Murky really good. We hear you. We want to rework Murky. And then they make Murky way too strong, and he's brain dead, and everybody can play him because he's that good. And they go, okay, we made him too strong. Here's some nerfs. And you know what this nerf is? This nerf makes it so the players who are good with him are still going to be really good with him, and all the brain dead players are going to suck with him. So you see, uh, you see a weird dip in win rate but he's still going to be as effective as he was in the hands of players who know what to do with him and that cheating trait of you know i don't stay dead as long as you in the late game so i predict another nerf in three weeks and uh then he will go back to being irrelevant we'll see which is why i'm still (laughs) banging the drum of blizzard change his trait it makes no sense I think, yeah. honestly, a 48% win rate is right where Murky should always sit. Uh-huh. Um, just as far as, like, if you're trying to balance a hero with a game-breaking ability, they should never be OP. They should always be slightly worse than average. So that the people who are dedicated can play him. But when a hero like Murky is good, he is oppressive. Yep. Um, and so you want him to be in a spot where, like, the good players can be, like, a reasonable hero, like, contribute to your team, do good stuff. Um, but they're not allowed to just like run rampant, and this mm-hmm. this this change basically had nerfed a lot of his slows and his some of his pushing power and like his health a little bit. So a lot of the utility and stuff around him, he still does a lot of damage. They didn't change mm-hmm. that. Yeah, surviving with Murky was always the thing. Like you had to try and survive with him and 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 stay you know around and and stick to people. And when they put that damage up and they made his survivability better, he became really good in the hands of a lot of people. So, yeah. I'll just say um, I only saw one Murky in my games today. Yeah, his play rate's yeah. definitely going to go down because it, it nerfed and that's happened. People, people that were playing him for, you know, since since the rework probably tried to log in and play him and go, oh, I don't like Murky anymore. Like, don't get me wrong, I love the concept of eggshell uh, Big Tuna Kahuna Murky because that's like a 7k health murky that's a giant health pull for a dude that will have a 16 second respawn but like it just didn't work like it doesn't work to me like that's like making murky a late game tank and that's not what you need like the amount of the scary amount of damage the guy just the, the, the murloc would put out with that build i mentioned was just 
ridiculous. <laughs> and they haven't even really touched it that much. Um, I mean, they touched uh, Time to Krill, and they touched the slow amount that Slime does, but for the most part, like, it's still going to put out the same amount of damage. So, I'm kind of, I am kind of surprised at the amount, uh, the drop in win rate. So, like I said, it's very, I think it's very a, early on. So, we'll yeah, see. it's a lot of people who were playing him just because he was that good. That are going. We'll see what happens. There's that time where I think Riot said they nerfed a champion. They went down like three percent win rate. Turns out they hadn't actually included it in the patch. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing had changed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness people are susceptible yeah that's true Suggestion. Uh, but getting through the rest of these patch notes real quick uh, supports uh, a couple of supports kind of got some quality of life changes I guess um, Lucio's amp it up healing got reduced by one point uh, so that's the e, the e when you have the healing uh, or up uh, at the level 7 blizzard fixed this fix the patch notes to level seven um boombox duration increased by 10 seconds and party mix range decreased by five percent um i still feel like party mix is still the the Go pick to? here yeah yeah absolutely the range increase the the additional range on the aoe is just absolutely insane like you go from okay you guys kind of got to stay around me to i ah, well, do whatever mm-hmm and from you know. the games I played today, uh, didn't feel a whole lot different. So I'm I'm not too worried about Lucio's place right now. Uh, Malfurion. Like, I, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no I, I really want to like Boombox. But again, Party Mix exists. Mm-hmm. You know, like I love the concept behind Party Mix. Like you can drop it. Boombox. In fr- boom, yeah, Boombox. I'm sorry. You can drop it in front of you for that extra healing. They can't. I don't think you can kill the Boombox. Um, Mm-mm. so you can have a healing boost going, and then when it's time to leave, you can swap it, the boombox swaps, and everybody leaves yeah, very the, quickly. The thing is, it doesn't stack. So, I mean, I don't know. And okay. for, for, for a mobile hero, it seems weird having to put something down on the ground and have your team kind of fight around that, I guess, to get the benefit of it. Um, maybe, maybe on don't, tributes don't or something like stack. that. I don't know. What? You don't want, you don't want it to stack. You don't want both buffs going at the same time or double buffs going at the same time. That would be absolutely <laughs> broken. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let's, let's, okay. Let's say it's 16. I've got Rejuvenesca and then, uh, I, there's a team fight going down. I dropped the boom box. I amp it up. The boom box amps up and then I'm getting, uh, what, Thirty percent health, or no, fifteen uh, percent health a second to my team. That no, 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 no. That's that's too much. That's insane. So, like, eh, like it doesn't need to stack. It, it it is more. It's more of a range extender, so your team can be in front of you and fight safely. So mm-hmm. while you watch while you watch your back line, you watch your 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 Chromie, your your Vala, whoever to and protect them from like Sarah tools, Valeras, stuff like that. So you can uh sound wave those targets away from your squishies. So it's it's a it's a way of do, being in two places at once with your with your uh, your passive. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Um so yeah, that's Lucio, but Malfurion also received changes. I think, Bowerg fan, you've talked a lot about this kind of being the problem with Malf. Uh, root duration is being reduced by a quarter of a second, uh, as well as the uh, Tenacious, Tenacious Roots root. talent at level 16 uh, being reduced by a quarter of a second as well. Uh, Twilight Dream also getting a little bit of a change. Mana regen reduced uh, from 1.5 to 1.25. I did play Malfurion today in a couple games. Didn't really seem a whole lot different but um i think these are good changes that route's still long enough to get somebody killed yeah which is you know it's now not long enough to get two sloppy kills that weren't really focused (laughs) in damage Uh with people who were like a bit apart like 
you know, it's one thing if, if you root three people and, and Ragnaros hits them with uh, um, Self Hero uh, Smash. Self Hero Smash, yeah. I mean, they're dead. That's, yeah. Oh, yeah. Shouldn't have done that. Well, the point you like, said five seconds doesn't change that. That's you hit a good root and self here is follow up. Right. But <laughs> if you got like two kind of like, you know, mid to almost full health characters and they both get kind of focused out and die because of that, they were stuck for just long enough. That's that's where I think this is going to change things. Um, it needed to happen. He's got yeah. so much. He still has he still has all the utility in the world. He yeah, still he's is, still really good. Yeah, he's still a great healer with a silent AOE silence and uh, has really strong roots. So there's yeah, he's still going to be my highest uh, prioritized uh, healer. Yeah. yeah, I think he's st- he's going to be good. This is like kind of the perfect level of nerf, I think, to him because it's not like oh, Malfurion's in the dumpster, never pick him again. Um, but it'll open up sixteen talent diversity. It'll nerf him a little bit. And uh, I don't, he'll I don't, be in a really good spot. I don't think it will for sixteen because the you I feel like you really take the tenacious roots for the increased range of it versus just the it's not a cast range, isn't it? It's just the radius. Or it's whatever? the radius of uh, entangling roots. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. That's how I've always <clears throat> approached it, but I'm also I agree in bronze with Jimmy. league, so. I, I agree with Jimmy as well, despite <laughs> him being in Bronze League, as he said just now. Well, that and the fact that there's really not a lot else to pick there. You can take hard and focus, but... It, yeah, I think it's more the other talents. Like, I don't know. The, I mean, the radius... There's no, There aren't any, like, chokes in the game that you need the extra radius that I can think of. It pretty much fills all the hallways. Well, it's not... Yeah, it's not the chokes. It's more, like, just you know, being able to put one a little farther out because of your level four talent, uh, mm-hmm. Alun's Grace. Yeah. And the fact that it's a little farther out, because the way I always approached Roots, and I, I hit them pretty well with him, is that I look for that moment when I know we're about to swing a team fight and people are going to, the other team's going to start trying to bail. So I either zone them out by placing the root behind them or they walk into it and they die. So. Yeah. I mean, when you have that bigger radius, it makes it all the more easier. Mm-hmm. Well, so really quickly though, last uh, support change to be tested. Our Kadarian Res- Resonance uh, did get changed, and uh, this is the Regen Globe talent. Uh, Regen Globes grant an additional 50% mana, and after collecting 15 globes, you get an increased value of Plasma Shield by 15%. And then after 30 globes, increase the duration of Plasma Shield by 100%. So, no that's... more permanent shields. Yeah, no more permanent shields. I, did this uh, talent always give 50 additional mana off the globes? Yeah, I think so. It was some sort of mana. T- you got some sort of mana on picking up globes, and then it like the first reward was double their duration. The second reward was infinite shielding. Um, well, with everything that the shields have built into it now, I think that's kind of necessary. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. I, I I think this was a change that's probably for the better. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I just Not wish I, I just it's wish structures, change. I just wish structures got life leech. <laughs> that would be pretty funny. I, I mean, it's not it's not gonna. I mean, the shields aren't gonna be there forever. No, they're not. <clears throat> but it would also uh, function as a really jank mule. Yes. Yeah. I'm, and this is completely. This is wildly off topic. It's just a a random thought. Do you think they'll ever have a hero who passively recharges the ammo of towers? Yes, I'm sure that'll be, that'll be the adjutant when they when they ever whenever they get to her. Mm-hmm. The Starcraft yeah, I lady. I can see that. Yeah, that would, that would, that. <clears throat> if you haven't watched it, go watch the. I, it'd be cool if from Carbot about the adjutant. I okay. love the concept behind her. That's a great series, by the way. It's an yeah. amazing series. I love the one for Deckard, and I <laughs> love the uh, Ajitant one. I really and like the, the Lady Bash one is... J one. Yeah, that was good. Bash J. <laughs> <laughs> I, I gave up trying to say your name right back when we were... Uh, what was that? Doing Serpent Serpentine Shrine Cavern? Yeah. yeah. I always messed it up. I'm like, you know what, guys? She's Lady Vash J. Uh, that's an old joke of mine. Is it just Vash? It's Vosh. Probably. 
<laughs> yeah. It's so much easier to say than Vash J. I, I called her, <laughs> but I called her Vaggy or something like that. Oh, God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can we bleep that out, please? No. It's staying in. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Vashy. Maybe like, maybe you should go on uh it would be cool if, if and uh, do the uh Hearthstone um Innkeeper. Innkeeper. Uh, Carbot, please. <laughs> I don't I don't have to be on this or involved in any way. You just want to do guys it. do Innkeeper for me. There you go. Make sure he has an ability where he throws out cards and the card rarity is random and each one has a random effect. There you go. Please. So we talked a whole lot about uh, the patch, uh, but we do have a tournament coming up. We did have a weekend with basically without uh, HGC. Well, no, that's not entirely true. We had the final weekend of Korea, and that was insane. Um, just really quickly, if you missed the first game between L5 and MVP Black, it's a must-see game. Uh, SCSC's play on Tracer is out of this world. I I don't know how he won so many team fights where he was like 2v1, 3v1, he would get out alive and get kills off it. It was just crazy. So check that out. But the Western Clash is coming up. Uh Balrog fan, do you want to talk a little bit about this? We're going to continue our predictions here. Um and I'm really excited to to see how this plays out cuz this this will be in his um First opportunity to really uh, prove us wrong in thinking that EU is, is stronger than them right now. Okay, so this is a uh, double elimination tournament. If you're familiar with a lot of like any fighting games, kind of like it's it's going to be structured the same way, where you have to lose twice to be knocked out of the tournament. I think they've done this before for Hots as well, right? They've done double elimination. Yeah, yeah. Um, so if, if you remember that, it's. It's kind of uh, it's going to be the same thing. Um, the pairings are um, for the first round are Misfits versus Nomia. Is, am I saying that right? Mm-hmm. And they're the Australian team, correct? Yes, are they you're the... correct. They're the Australian okay. team. And then uh, there's Teammate versus Dignitas. There's Tempo Storm versus Infamous, which is the us, uh, which Latin is America. the uh, South South Latin America. And then uh, Fnatic versus Gale Force. Um, after that, the winners get paired up and they play each other. It's a tournament. Um, our picks, basically we, we have a bracket and we went through and we picked how we think the tournament is going to play out for each correct winner. We picked, we get one point for each time we correctly guessed the matchup. We're not doing like the three, two thing. What we're doing is if you got both picks, correct, you get an additional two points. Was it Zex or three? Uh, three. An additional three points. And then if you end up picking a perfect bracket, it's ten extra points. If you get the grand finals correct, that's five points. So that's what we did. And it's did, it's pretty straightforward. Um, didn't we say if you picked a perfect bracket, you got ten? Yeah, yeah, I said that. Okay. Um, so, Sorry. yep. Um, oh, no, you're good. So I will just, uh, I mean, I can just read off mine. Um, in the first let's, round, or what? Let's read all of ours off individually. Yeah. Um, in the first round, I have Misfits moving on to beat Nomia, putting them in the loser bracket. I have Teammate beating Dignitas, and then I have Tempo Storm beating Infamous, and Fnatic versus Gale Force. Um, I have Fnatic coming out on top of that. And uh, yeah. Um, after that, uh, Misfits and Teammate, I have Misfits winning that. And then Tempo Storm versus Fnatic, I have Tempo Storm winning that. And what, how it will play out in the bottom bracket, that means Nomeo plays Dignitas. I have Dignitas winning that. And then uh, because Fnatic loses, it's kind of convoluted to just like talk it out now that I'm like going Most through of, it. We probably just talk through our upper bracket because yeah. the lower one's so subjective. Yeah. Um, that'll lead to Misfits versus Tempo Storm. I have teammate coming out of losers basically to face Misfits in the grand finals and I think Misfits will win it all. Okay, so, so I'm going to call I'm going to call Charlie a copycat kind of because I've got Misfits over Nomia, teammate over Dignitas, Tempo Storm over Infamous, fin, uh Fnatic over Gale Force. Same as me. Yep. Next round I've got Misfits against teammate 
I do have Misfits moving on. Uh, Tempo Storm against Fnatic. I have Tempo Storm moving on. You mean you have tw- teammate moving on, right? No, I have I have Misfits moving on. He oh, does. He betrayed team. his team. Okay. No. <laughs> no, no. Listen. <laughs> so for winners, for uh, winner side, I have Misfits versus Tempo Storm. Okay. Now and then. For the loser semis, I have Dignitas versus Teammate. I have Teammate beating uh, Dignitas again. And then Tempo and an NA showdown for losers finals. I have Tempo Storm versus Teammate. I have Teammate avenging their HGC loss. Moving on to grand finals against Misfits. And I am riding this choo choo Team 8 train all the way home. Team 8 will win the clash. <laughs> you heard it here first. Lock it in. <laughs> Don't actually I, lock that in. There are no locks here. <laughs> <laughs> See me, Normus. No Luffergy. Uh, I fanatics I first, looks so good lately. Yeah, yeah. I it's think it's hard to. It's not I, so much <laughs> that I don't trust Gale Force. I just think they're going to have a hard road, and teammate has been more consistent. Yeah. So if the bracket plays out the way that I think it will, Gale Force has to play Fnatic, then they have to play Teammate. I, and I, 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 trust me, anybody who tells me my Chen is good, I love them forever. <laughs> so oh Equinox goodness. told me on Twitter that my Chen was good and it was OP, and I love him forever. So, but I'm being a realist about this because I have to bop these three fools in this turn in this little thing we're doing. I've got to, I've got to beat him up. So <laughs> I've got to be a realist. I will, yeah. I will be cheering for uh, Gale Force. If they win, I will not be sad about it. But that said, I think Teammate and Tempo Storm are just simply better, or playing better right now. And it's going to be really interesting to see how those two NA teams stack up against EU. In, in this in this clash, I think it's going to be amazing. Jimmy, you want to go ahead and read off yours, and then we'll let our uh, current point leader read off his last. Yeah, sure. I mean, the only thing you need to know is my top three is Misfits winning it all, Fnatic coming from the losers bracket to that grand final, and Dignitas uh, losing in third or getting third place. I just I haven't seen anything from EU or from NA that really. Makes me think that they'll challenge EU in any sort of way. I mean, I'd love, I would be ecstatic if Gale Force won this thing. I just do not think it's it's happening. Not not this tournament. Not right now. EU is just way too strong. Misfits looks incredible right now, and Fnatic um, has seemingly had Diggs' number the past couple tournaments. Um, and Diggs a really good team, so that just speaks to how strong EU is. Um, and as much as I, I would love to see the minor regions make a, a bit of a, a clash, I just I don't see that happening this time around. Well, because the unfortunate thing is the minor regions are pitting against the number one team from both regions. Mm, yeah, exactly. Like, even this plays Temple Storm first, and Misfits and Nomia face off. You know, like, if it, Nomia plays against Gale Force or against, I mean, shoot. I guess Dignitas, I don't remember. Like, Dignitas is a global force. I don't think they're going to lose to... But anyways, it's like, it's just actually their stiffest competition they have to go up against first, which kind of sucks for them, but... Yeah, the, well, the thing is, though, I, you kind of have to think I, that uh, if you're going to win the tournament, you have to beat them at some point, so you might as well just beat them in the first well, round. Well, yeah, but, like, you know, the, these these teams don't come in here with the goal of winning the tournament. I mean, like, it's kind of like a pie-in-the-sky dream, but mm-hmm. their goal is to make some statements and knock some games off and hopefully take a series or two off of these, these you know, well-known teams, you know? But if you're facing I, Misfits first, you know, that's different than playing even Dignitas or Gale Force or Team 8 or whatever. Because, like, that, they are 7-0 and in Europe. They are looking so good. Um, you know, so, like, if you're, if you're a team like Tempo Storm or Misfits, or Fnatic, you are like you, you don't get to complain about your first matchup because you're here to prove you can beat everybody in the tournament. Nomia and, Infer- and Infamous are here to try and beat somebody in the tournament. Now, I think, I think we're... 
I kind of feel like we're disrespecting Nomiya here a little bit and how we're we're talking about them because please buff Barth is, exists. And the first tournament please PBA showed up at, nobody gave him any nobody looked at him twice. They're Taiwanese, right? Yeah, there's a Taiwanese team that made that amazing mm-hmm. run but still fell short. You know, at the end, I think they got top. I, I know they got top eight, but I think they were on the verge of breaking into top four at one BlizzCon. And like, we don't know much about Nomia. You know, we we have. If you go to Heroes of the Storm BlizzPro.com, you'll see mm-hmm. an amazing write up yep. of the recent H. Uh, uh, ANZ. ANZ. Yeah, ANZ HGC by one of our newest writers. Um, and he did an amazing job of it. Um, one of yeah, the if you're curious about the team, definitely guys. definitely check it out. So we may be sleeping on Nomia for all we know. You know, for all we know, these guys could have been in, you know, the hyperbolic time chamber powering up. <laughs> and you know, they're gonna they're gonna come to this hungry and just bop everybody. We don't we don't know that yet. So I kind of don't want to discount Nomia yet. They're I'm mean, going to say they're the, the dark horse because we don't know anything about them. We know a little bit about all the other teams except Nomia. So, like, and when you're going up against a team you have no idea about, that's kind of terrifying. Because you have no idea how they b- ban, how they draft, what what their long-term uh, meta strats are. They could have went through that. They could have went through uh, their qualifiers just cheesing everything, you know. Actually, and, makes a point. Uh, Taiwan yeah. plays on Korean server. ANZ plays on NA server. Really? Yeah. Yep. I'm not. Uh, that doesn't change my. That's that's a good point, Ashling. But that doesn't change anything. I mean, that my view is basically Korea or not here Taiwan. Is an is another tier from the rest of the wildcard regions. Like they're they're a fully legitimized region in league, which is the other esport I know. Um, they just won the midseason invitational last weekend. Um, you know, like they have, they're good, and you know, they showed up at the last global tournament, and they did well. Um, and I expect Please Both Arthas or whatever team comes out of there to continue to do well. Yeah, that'll be um, in the Eastern Clash in yeah. two weeks. I want to say I don't know. It's, it's a little, it's a little bit further down the road, but it is but coming. And like A and Z, it could happen. I'm not saying they're just going to O three out of both matches of the tournament and be done. But it's, it's less likely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I definitely okay. agree. So did wait? Did you say your picks? Flame? I have oh, not. Okay. Um, I have basically I have more faith in Temple Storm than Team Eight than all of y'all. Um, I think I just I don't know. I think they're gonna they're gonna do well. Um, I think uh, that Team Eight and Gale Force both have very distinct styles, which are easier to prepare for. Um, and I think Temple Storm is kind of good, right? And I think that's going to show up at a global competition. Um, you know, so we'll see what happens. But I have Misfits over Nomia again. I have Dig over Team 8. I have Tempo Storm over Infamous. And I have Fnatic over Gale Force. Um, and then I have Misfits over Dig. I have Tempo Storm over Fnatic. Uh, wow. Which, I don't know that it's going to happen. But I have faith that and any team's got to take a game off of you at some point. And I think Tempo Storm can do it. Teammate Dig is the other option for that to happen. But I think I'm just kind of Dig biased and teammate. I don't know. Well, so we'll see. And then um, I have Misfits beating Tempo Storm uh, basically twice in a row. I say Misfits is going to beat Tempo in the winner's finals, and then Tempo's going to go into the loser's bracket, beat Dig and Toss, and take it back to Misfits in the grand finals, but then Misfits is going to win again. Um, and again, I had Dig beating Fnatic uh, just because their their HCC match was so close, and Fnatic won it, and you know Dig's turn. But we'll see. I think honestly, I think y'all's are kind of more likely. I think 
teammate over Dig is more likely to to happen than Gale Force over Fnatic. But I just I'm gonna believe and and see what happens. There you have it. <laughs> so it, what we all have misfits uh, except for Zex. I think we all have misfits winning this tournament. Uh, yes, Zex believes teammate is gonna take it to him. Yeah, uh, that we would all be... have misfits in the finals. Yeah. They just... Teammate winning would be absolutely insane. Because, I mean, we, we all started HGC, and we were like, oh, teammates going to be terrible. They they <laughs> had 2-8 drop out and had to add prismaticism at the last second, and they're going to be awful. And oh, look at them now. To, to be fair, all signs pointed towards them being terrible. Yes. And they like, did. Yes. Absolutely. I mean, absolutely. like, professionals were writing them off. The commentators were writing them off. We were writing them. Everybody was. And they showed up, and they're doing well, and I respect them. Um, but, I mean, has anybody on Teammate ever been to an international competition? Uh, um, I'm pretty sure, yeah. Yes, Glaurung was part of Dig, uh, um, um, Denial um, and played at BlizzCon last year. Oh, yeah, I forgot he was part of that Denial lineup. We'll see. Yeah, definitely. I have faith. They they've Tempo Storm is international caliber in my opinion. And they are up there with Tempo Storm. I think teammate is. So that's why that's why I'm putting all my faith in the teammate. Maybe I'll maybe maybe I'll be wrong. Maybe they'll 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 choke and someone will have to call them a doctor. Yeah. But, I mean, we'll see. You know, all of us are EU's performed really well against NA in the past, and everybody says their games look, you know, cleaner and stuff. But who knows? I, we haven't seen them play. NA could show up big. But here's you the know, most. That's important. why the clash exists. True. But here's the most important thing I've, I've taken away from HGC so far. There was a certain team that claimed they were the best team in NA. <laughs> uh oh, I wonder what's coming. Uh, and, Zex has to get his weekly dig in. And. I guess they're. Where are they? They're. They're. Uh, they're, talking, they're talking all this good stuff every week in their interviews. Like, they're. They're in danger of the crucible. They are going to be in the crucible. Are you kidding me? Naventic is garbage. <laughs> like, oh man. They're just absolutely terrible. I don't even know why. Like, why are they still together? Because they gotta sell merchandise. Uh, get a, get five kindergartners, put them on the Ventic, you'll get better <laughs> results. Oh my goodness. Oh man. Uh, really quickly though, this got actually got announced uh, after our show last week, but uh, they did release the caster and host lineup for the Western Clash, and it's it's a stacked lineup of casters. So we're going to have Red Eye hosting, I think this is his first Heroes event, and if you have no clue who Red Eye is, are you in for a treat or what? This guy has been hosting esports events forever. And he is an excellent, excellent host. So I'm excited to see what he brings to the Heroes table. Uh, Zex, I know you want to say a few words just because it's Red Eye. Brutal. Savage. Wrecked. Um, no, so Red Eye. Red Eye is an amazing host. Like, I am really legitimately excited to see him. See him there. Um, he does a wonderful job with the Dota internationals. Um, like the guy, the guy is funny. The guy, the guy is smart. I'm sure he's taken his time to learn, uh, as much as possible about heroes. So he can, you know, contribute to the conversations. I've seen previous tweets from him about heroes. So he's obviously interested in it. Um, so, like the guy, you you're in for a treat. You will, if you enjoy esports, if you enjoy good hosting, you're about to see like the best in the business. Short is he of a Kyle good. Laris analyst couch host, or is he an Anna Prosser host? Both. Both, yeah. I'd say both. Okay. He's he like if you asked me to pick two people and you gave me those names. And then you gave me red eye. I would say, just give me one red eye. Like he's that good. Like he's absolutely just wonderful. He's yeah. I'm what, nerd. I'm, I'm kind of I, I'm I'm going to take a drink, so I shut my mouth. Yeah. Uh, 
if you you really want to see some fun clips uh, with him, uh, search Red Eye plus In Control. There's been some fun HEC stuff there. <laughs> this or uh, just uh, stuff with uh, what's it called? Home Story Cup. There we go. HSC. All these acronyms they just they just meld together. Uh, but there's also one from I think in IEM where a guy walks into the shot and he calls him an idiot, and the guy like tries to start a fight with Red Eye, and it's the funniest thing. So, like, Google red eye fight with a guy. I don't know. It's, it's pretty funny. Fight with a guy. Fight with a guy. Yeah. I'll, I'll go look up the uh, the uh, clip here. <laughs> but uh, the caster lineup is insane as well. As, uh, all eight casters from uh, HEC Pro of both regions and HEC Open are going to be there as well. So it's Dreadnought, Gillyweed, Caldor, Trixler, Grubby, J. Howe, Tetcher, and Solid Jake. Um, so this is the first time we've seen Caldor all season. Um, so we'll finally yep. see him make his uh, way in there. Um, and if you didn't uh, hear, uh, Calaris is doing StarCraft right now for um, for this uh, for IEM as well. So he is busy with that, but he might make a, a, a little appearance, I'm sure, in the Heroes side of things. I'm, I'm sure he'll drop by and say hi at one point. But yeah, quite the lineup, quite the games we have on our schedule coming up uh, this weekend. I'm excited. I know you guys are all excited because we've had a, a weekend without NA heroes. I want yeah, my heroes. It's gonna be a really good tournament. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be fantastic. We'll uh, we'll watch. We'll all be wrong, and the AZN team just comes in and just destroys everybody. Like. Perfect games. Oh, I would love that. Seven love seven level leads at the end of every game. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen a seven level lead ever. I think in four games. is the highest <laughs> I've ever seen. I think I've they, seen bits of they, five. They repeatedly five v one kill bakery and then B step oh around his corpse in perfect unison. They're not playing bakery first. They're playing uh, misfits. Well, that's how hard they're going to beat Misfits. <laughs> is that they'll appear in Dignitas's game and just be stuff around them while taunt dancing. All right, there you have it. <laughs> uh, did we want to go to mm. the strategy questions, or did we want to go to our um, play session? We can, we can just go to the play session. Okay. We haven't really right. We're we're already an hour and ten minutes in. Alrighty, well, uh, thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, we'll be playing our games with the viewers uh, very shortly here. So if you are watching us live on Twitch, make sure to join Channel Bliss Row in the Heroes of the Storm client, and we will pull people from there. We'll we'll figure out what exactly we're going to be playing, um, as well as uh, Patreons are going to have first priority. Patreon.com slash Heroes Power gives you all the information there about what uh, what you can get from helping support the show. Uh, we wouldn't be able to do this show without uh, the help from all of you. So we greatly, greatly appreciate it. Uh, as always, check out HeroesTheStorm.BlizzPro.com. We already talked about the new uh, writer talking about the Australian scene and the team coming out from there for the western clash as well as everything the robot alebeard puts out uh always keep up to date on the latest news there and if you're looking for past episodes of the heroes power you can always see those on youtube.com slash blizzpro along with all our other wonderful shows uh wednesdays at six pacific is west march workshop uh for diablo 3 thursday at 7 p.m pacific is the payload podcast for overwatch Mondays at 7 p.m. Pacific this is a new day uh, well met for Hearthstone and Arcane Analysis for World of Warcraft is in audio format only so make sure to check out blizzpro.com to hear new episodes and as always join us on discord.blizzpro.com where we're chatting about Blizzard games all week long. Uh, any closing thoughts before we go into our uh, viewer games uh, Bower fan? Follow me on Twitter. Check out my Twitch page. I do stuff on there a lot. Um, play Heroes with me. I uh, like video games. <laughs> Excited for the <laughs> Clash. Uh, Final thoughts. G. Season ends in two weeks, y'all. 
Uh, get your games in this week. You don't want to get them in the week after. <laughs> there, you <go. laughs> there you have it. Uh, Zex, that's how about best. you? It came at the end of the show, but that's the best advice you'll yeah, ever get pretty much. as a yeah. Heroes player. Right there. Yeah. Right, yeah. Zex, you uh, survived the tornado. I did. I somehow... Apparently, uh, it hit maybe a mile away from me. Apparently, a tornado Sick. did touch down, and it hit a mile away from me. So, uh, follow my mini new gust. Twitch. Yeah, mini gust. Um, follow oh, my new man. Twitch Twitch page, uh, Zexorus Heroes. Um, I don't play Heroes on there for some reason. <laughs> uh, I, I should, but I end up speedrunning Fantasy Star 4 a lot. You should come watch. It's pretty neat. Uh, follow me on Twitter. Follow Charlie on Twitter. Follow Char- Charlie's Twitch page. It's pretty neat watching him speedrun Shining Force, and then I make him listen to Boogie Wonderland for hours. Follow the number one NA Fantasy Star 4 record holder, Zexorus. I, I am the American record holder for Fantasy Star 4. You're not wrong. <laughs> uh, and as always, hey, Charlie is showing us. Some yeah, stuff. Sh- Charlie is showing us some stuff. As always, thank you to Legion by Lenovo and Intel for partnering with us and helping make the show possible. Uh, as for myself, follow me on uh, Twitter and Twitch, DJ Tarrant. That's where I'm at. And that'll be episode number 94 of the Heroes Power. We will see you shortly for. A games with the viewers and we'll see you next week stay tight stay tight stay tight stay tight there we go